Hi relatives and welcome to week six of Sensory Fitness Live. We are so happy that you can join us today. I'm Val and this is Tina. We are from Mount Mary University and we are occupational therapy interns here at Her Wellness Institute. You may not know what occupational therapy is and how sensory fitness go hand in hand. Well, OTs are mentors of hope dignity and function who help individuals reach their highest potential through methods as dynamic as each individual. Occupational therapists are also enablers of independence and facilitators of passion to support long-term meaningful goals of an individual. Well, relatives, these episodes of Sensory Fitness Live will help address difficulties with homework, focusing, and sitting while virtual learning. COVID has caused some major disruptions in everyone's life, including children and their parents. School is happening very differently and virtual learning could be really taking a toll on someone's body and mind. We have to think and plan harder to take, have a flow and sometimes I'm sure there are more opportunities uh, for meltdowns or feeling out of sorts. Meltdowns and tantrums are not misbehaviors. They are outward expressions of a child's inner distress. We have to look at what our children have lost with this pandemic, steering clear from setting that bar too high. On a more positive note, the pandemic has allowed for a time to get to know our children in a new light. We have to try to set them up to be the most functional in their routines. Therefore, sensory fitness will help manage when you're feeling out of sorts by helping us to regulate our brains so that we have that focus, alertness, and connection to be in that just right gear, ready to respond place. Okay. Last week, we learned more about our vestibular and proprioception systems. We talked about how to activate the vestibular system through play and various movements to help develop the brainstem and manage how our engines are running. One example was to take a basket and to put your child's toiletries in it, such as the washcloth, their toothpaste, their toothbrush, and place it on the bathroom floor to change their head position by reaching down to retrieve their items from the basket. Another example was to use a wobble cushion so that your child could feel more regulated while learning in the classroom or on a virtual platform. I also mentioned how heavy work helps children activate their proprioceptive systems by delivering compression and stretching to your child's joints, such as pulling weeds and doing push-ups. Weighted blankets and vests are also a form of heavy work, which can help a child feel regulated and help them feel a sense of calm. How did this go for you relatives? Were you able to try out any of the options? Leave us a comment down below. We'd be happy to learn more about your experience. Thank you, Tina. Um, relatives, we also learned to be a detective. We mentioned how you'll have to examine the different behaviors that your child may be expressing um, in organizing these different behaviors, we thought of them as gears in an engine. The engine is a symbol of our body where the gears are all of our sensations. This leads us to what we're going to be learning about today, relatives. We will be going more in depth about our tactile system, also known as our touch system. Well, first relatives, let's take a look at the speedometer again for a little refresher. An engine that's running in a high gear, which is right here, may look like you're overwhelmed or frustrated, have tense posture, your child may be cranky, fidgeting, they may be angry, overly excited, or even fearful. If the engine is running too low, it may look like they are sad or discouraged. They may even have a slouchy posture. 
be sleepy, or have a lack of interest in activities. A just right here, just right here, is when we feel happy and balanced. Our children switch into these gears, these different gears throughout the day. And we as parents move through these different gears as well. But we do activities without really thinking about it to get us back to that just right gear. Keep in mind that we travel through these different gears all day long, and that's okay. Sometimes we tend to stay in one of the three gears for most of the day, and that's okay too. We want to provide strategies for when the gear you are in isn't supportive with the task at hand. Relatives, we will now go over PACE to get us to ready to learn the topic for today. PACE is a simple regulation strategy using movement to wake up the brain and bring it to the just right gear. This helps us get into a better regulated state. PACE is a quick and easy way to get us back to that just right gear. So I invite you to grab some water for this activity, which will help increase the electricity in your body. And now from a seated position or standing, you will go down and touch your toes and then come back up. And then just take a note of how that felt for you. And we will revisit it in a little bit. Now you're going to take one hand to your chest and the other on your belly and close your eyes. And now take your left hand to your right knee and right hand to your left knee and just alternate as you go. Don't forget to keep breathing and keep yourself in that just right gear. Now you're going to cross your ankles and put your arms in front of you. Put the back of your hands together then reach over and clasp your fingers and bring your hands into your body and close your eyes and just breathe normally. And we're just going to take a couple breaths here. Good. Go ahead and uncross your arms and your legs. And now bring your fingertips together. Now touch your toes again and come back up. What did you notice that was different? Be sure to let us know below. How are you feeling relatives? Did you notice a difference? In just that short time we have caused the brain to be in a better regulated state. This means with more opportunities for learning and directing our attention. With daily practice or several times a day using PACE, you may notice your child has an easier time focusing and paying attention while they are engaged in their virtual learning to better grasp the information that is being presented to them. Thank you so much for that, Tina. Yeah, thank you. I feel so much more calmer now after doing that. Me too. Sure, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Cause so, thank you for that. Um, so now we're going to go in and talk about our sense of touch. The sense of touch is also known as our tactile system, which is one of the, our most important senses. The sense of touch is important for growth and development as well as survival. It usually goes about doing its job without us even noticing very much. Yet it is very important for allowing us to perform many skills, to feel comfortable and at ease in many situations. Our sense of touch allows us to receive information about our internal and external environments, making it important for sensory perception. And touch also allows us to judge how soft or firm an object is, differentiate shapes and textures, and experiences the sensations of temperature and pain. If the sense of touch is not very specific, that is, it doesn't provide like clear, um, consistent information, then it may be more difficult to understand these types 
of differences, visually or cognitively. The hands, feet, and mouth are the most sensitive areas of our bodies because they have more, many more cells which detect and respond to touch. We depend on information from our touch system to help us perform many skills. Think about how hard it is uh, to do anything with gloves on, for example. Your muscles still work the same, but you have reduced feedback from your sense of touch. Think now of, of all the intricate tasks done by using your sense of touch without looking. Finding a dime in the bottom of your pocket or buttoning a button on the back of a t-shirt of your shirt. Cracking a sunflower seed and removing the seed out with your tongue. All day long, one after the other, we rely on our sense of touch to perform everyday tasks without even giving a second thought. How would you do these things if your sense of touch did not help you very much? How much longer do you think it would take for you to do things if you had to stop and look at everything or if you had to think about everything? You're going to do with your hands. This happens to many children who are not able to rely on their sense of touch. It can be very frustrating and confusing. Thank you, Val. You're welcome. A child with tactile dysfunction also has hyper or hypo sensitivity to touch or may have problems with tactile discrimination. Some children may excessively or under register the touch input. They may have a problem with tactile sensory modulation. It may create a problem in daily routine. In tactile defensiveness, the child may interpret and react to harmless light touch as being potentially dangerous. These children may appear anxious, aggressive, unwilling to participate in home and school activities. Some kids may have hyporesponsive touch input. They may have a low arousal level and may not register some of the touch stimuli, stimuli around them. This poor response to touch input may hamper the activities of daily living. Body awareness and motor planning may be disturbed. Some children seem to seek out excessive amounts of touch sensations. They crave for the touch sensations around them, and they try to touch everything around them in their environment. The tactile system is very important for the development of other skills like gross motor skills, fine motor skills, Sensory tactile activities may be used to improve the modulation of tactile sensation. A child who is over responsive to touch stimuli may be rubbing off kisses or casual touches and pushing others away to avoid closeness. They may instantly and intensely exhibit a fight or flight response or a flight or freeze response to harmless touch sensations. Dislike messy activities such as cooking, painting, using chalk or tape, they may be bothered by certain types of clothing and be particularly sensitive to socks, seams, shoes, and tags and shirts. Thank you so much, Tina. Um, so a child who is under responsive to touch sensations may seem unaware of touch unless it's, it is intense, showing little reaction to pain and getting hurt without even realizing it, possibly not even realizing that he or she dropped something. They might have poor body awareness. They might even have a disregard whether clothes are on straight or their face is messy. A child who seeks extra touch sensations may touch objects and people constantly with in your face behavior. They might seek certain messy experiences, often for long durations. They possibly might even bite their own skin, twirl their hair in their fingers, or prefer being barefoot. They might even chew on inedible items, such as fingernails, collars, cuffs, toys, and even pencils. Tactile activities can really help the child to modulate this tactile sensation and can be an important part of a sensory diet or fine motor skill building program. 
Tactile activities are also very helpful in problems like hand and finger awareness, attention, and fine motor planning. Here are some things that you can do at home to help your child whose sense of touch is less than optimal or who might benefit from enhanced touch feedback since it can be very calming for some children. So one example um, is to play hide and seek games like within like that are hidden, for example, like let's say there's rice in here or it can even be like dry beans. And what you um, want to make sure is to choose object that your child um, is familiar with and see if he, can, he or she can identify um, the objects by touch alone. So let's say, for example, like I want you to reach into the rice and feel out for a block. You know, look, he's reaching around and he pulls a block out just by touch. You know, that way, you know, little simple objects like this can really help benefit um, your child. But for someone for, thank you, Tina, um, for someone who maybe be nonverbal, you can take basically like a ball, a coin, and a block and place it in front of them. And then you can definitely say, when you find one of these, show it to me. And like, basically, they would look for that. So you're showing them, find me a ball, right? One of these, and they would look in the rice of the beans and find that ball and then pull it out for you. Thank you. Another example is to play games where you ask your child to describe an object being felt without looking at it. You can keep the ideas simple, such as round, cold, or wet, or more complex, such as long, smooth, pointed objects. So for example, you could have different sensory toys around, and this one is long, and you can feel that stretch. It's really squishy. Mm -hmm. Or you can have something different where they have we have these rough balls that almost feel like velcro mm. so they can get that tactile input that way a ball is a great way mm -hmm. to get tactile input you can squeeze it you can throw it you can catch it mm -hmm. the bean bag here has a different type of texture and it has some weight to mm -hmm. it so you can play catch with a friend you can toss it you can make it a game this object is round and smooth and then you have Legos mm -hmm. which are rough and thin and you could create different shapes with them thank you Tina yeah uh, you might also have your child um, identify shapes or letters and numbers that are drawn on the back of their hands so you can play this game in the bathtub or um, draw through soap foam or shaving cream so that they can see that shape after they had tried to guess. Um, so you can even like grab their hand, like for example, thank you, Tina, and then just you know, oh, what you know, shape without them looking, even like what letter am I drawing on the back of your hand? And then they have them guess, you know, what it was. Um, so just think about the different ways relatives uh, to involve novel tactile experiences during play and daily activities. For example, um, even crawling through tunnels, um, climbing over cushions, or rolling in blankets, cloths of various textures, adding shaving cream to a small pool and do like a slip and slide, uh, making fun cooking activities also that involve um, forming dough with the hands, um, adding cloths, sponges, loofahs, and scrubs to bath time, and getting buried even at the sand is is very helpful mm -hmm. and fun yes mm -hmm. <laughs> relatives we hope this was helpful for you today we are so looking forward to hearing about your experiences next week in order to figure out which strategies work best for your child you'll have to be a sensory detective to find that out it will take some trial and error but when something is working you will be able to see what strategies were most helpful by the way your child responds to the task at hand Many factors may influence changes in your child's sensory needs from day to day, from activity to activity, and even from minute to minute. Therefore, you have to utilize sensory tools that are safe and effective for your child and their needs. Individual sensory needs are not to be judged as good or bad, right or wrong. They just are, 
So we have to teach others to understand that an ind individual's sensory preferences are to be honored. If you have more questions or would like to set up a personal Zoom appointment, please feel free to call our main number at 414-763-5815. Thank you so much, Tina. Thank you. You're welcome. So relatives, we also know that times are tough, and um, but the different gears we are experiencing um, are normal, but can sometimes be hard and feel hard to manage. Yeah. Here at Her Wellness, we are always here to offer a helping hand. When things might seem tough, you can always send us an email for more information and support or call our CARES warm line for social and emotional support at 414-748-2592. Someone will be in contact with you within 24 hours of your inquiry. Relatives, I just wanna say thank you so much. Well, we wanna say thank you so much um, for being with us today for week six of Sensory Fitness Live. I hope you enjoyed your time with us today. Um, just as much as we enjoyed being with all of you. We'll see you next week, relatives, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Please contact us if you have any questions or would like more information. We would love to respond. Have a good rest of your day, relatives. Bye. Bye.